They say life's a bitch, but so why you married her? <laughs> hey, you ain't you ain't choose that, right? It was forced upon you. <laughs> Alright, so I got uh, it's, it's been a long time coming and we came. It's been it's, the phrase goes, it's been a long time coming and we finally came, right? Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry about that. You're welcome. I'm Raziel Liz and you're listening to We Alive and Living. I be trying to have my radio voice on here like it's been a long time coming and we came. You're welcome. Rousey your Liz, and you're listening to We Alive and Living. Nah, but um, seriously, today, um, we're going to get into the shits, literally. Um, y'all know, I sponsor my book all the time, Shut the Fuck Up and Love. It's a book that helps you on mental health. It's a real strong, aggressive gut punch to the stomach. Gut punch to the stomach. What else would it be, right? Gut punch of motivation, straightforwardness, not for the faint of heart, faint of heart but it is for everybody. And there's something in there for everybody. It's just a real aggressive book. And I wanted to read, you know, every now and then I'll jump into a chapter of my book. So I read the chapter one and chapter two. And today I just kind of wanted to touch base on a topic in, in the book on chapter three, which is called S-H-I-T. I know some people would be like, oh, so it's called shit. No, it's S-H-I-T, meaning she hates it today. And by she, I mean Mother Earth. I mean the unicorns, the universe. Whatever it is, how you ever want to put that metaphorically. And let me just read you a little piece in it. And then we'll get into how I am explaining that and breaking it down for people. Um, okay, so S-H-I-T, she hates it today. They say, life's a bitch and then you die. Hmm. A dope artist said that, right? I need someone to explain this to me. So you're trying to tell me because the universe wasn't feeling it, I have to suffer. F-O-H, fuck out of here. Okay, let's get serious. Let me break this down, what I'm trying to say here. S-H-I-T, she hates it today. It's a little paragraph extensive here, but let me read this to you. It's real entertaining, right? So check it out. You wake up and you get ready for a regular day. Brush your teeth, get dressed, make your coffee, and head out the door. So far, so good. You get in your car, you drive off. Here comes that pink unicorn and flaming sword. You get on the main street only to hit traffic. You haven't even been driving five minutes and you already entered the day as a delayed. You're delayed, right, for the day. Now you're stuck in traffic with nothing to do but listen to the radio. You choose talk radio. Why? I don't know. You choose talk radio. Why? I don't know. It's something we do. We suffer to listen. Other people suffer, so we all fucking suffering. Stuck in traffic. <laughs> the podcast is covering a story about something terrible that happened last night. It's kind of funny. I, at the time when I wrote this, I, would, I, would, I didn't have a podcast, so it's kind of funny. I'm talking about a podcast and the podcast, reading about a podcast. You, know, you get it. So now you're stuck in traffic. And listen to bad news going on around the world. You notice that in traffic is you notice that the traffic is thicker than you expected in your so-called job. So you, you call your so-called job and tell them that you're going to be late. Your boss, who is always stressed out, who is always a stressed out asshole, gives you the this, this shit about a situation you can't control. Traffic. 45, to, 45 minutes to an hour later, you finally get to work and everyone is bitching. The workload is over the top and unfair to the staff. Co-workers are looking at you like you intended to be late on purpose. Like you just knew that today would be the day to have a traffic jam and delay your entire day out of sheer asshole-ism. It's a long day. Your boss is stressed. He takes it out on you. And on your lunch break, you, you have your, your favorite restaurant was burned down to the ground because the owner was cheating on his wife and she was retaliating by burning down his establishment. You are forced to eat at a fast food at a fast food place that has nasty ass food and bad service. Let's fast forward the day, shall we? You finally make it back home for a shitty day. You take a shower, decompress, watch a little TV, and have a drink. The day is over. Now I apologize if I read that all fucked up. You know what I mean? Because you know I mean, I mean literally sometimes. Plus I be tired when I do these podcasts, but I do them because I got to because I love it. So, okay. So as a <laughs> very exaggerated rough day but I've been through days like that and I'm sure many of us have so let me explain what I'm trying to say in this chapter you have a fucked up day like I said in, in the paragraph you know you, you you wake up you do your thing you brush your teeth you know the coffee doesn't taste as good as it should you know you go to your favorite place to get breakfast whatever the case may be and everything everything is just not going right then you hit traffic for no fucking reason blah blah blah, blah all this shit right work goes to hell you get home thinking like man I had a bad day this is some bullshit all right, let's break that down for a second. Let's identify a bad day or what it is exactly and how to know when you specifically had a bad day and what we're calling this day. 
You didn't have a bad day. The universe, everything going on around you, had a bad day. Not you. Now, yeah, it might have made your day worse or made your day bad or made your day feel bad, but don't allow yourself to fall into the trap of feeling like, ah, man, I'm so stressed out because everything is going wrong for me. Eh, no. What, number one, you woke up on the time that you were supposed to wake up like you always wake up, right? You wake up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, whatever. You leave by 7 o'clock, get to work by 7, 30, 8 o'clock. You do the same routine every fucking day, so... How is today your fault if you did it the same way? You know, you left the same time you always leave. How is it your fault? Understand this. You didn't cause a traffic jam. It wasn't your fault. You look up, you see the fucking unicorn in the air. Like, ha-ha, bitches. Read the book. You'll get what I mean by the unicorns. You see the unicorn in the air, like, boom. So you're like, man, traffic. But you didn't cause traffic. You didn't happen to traffic. Traffic, traffic happened around you. You know, it didn't happen to you, it happened around you. Something happened, whether it was an accident or something happened, or it's a cop pulling somebody over. You know, the fucking cops don't know how to pull people over without causing traffic sometimes. So, you know, it just it just delayed your process, which ricochets into being late at work and people mad at you because you came late and your boss, who's always having a bad day because he don't know how to manage shit, he gives you more shit on something that had nothing to do with you, right? Oh, because you late, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's impressive how people knowing very specifically that you're late, but not by your choosing. They know this shit. They even see on the news sometimes, on a traffic report, that there's traffic in this specific particular street. So they know you're not even bullshitting. They know you're being straight up honest. And they still mad at you. They still bitching. Like, you really had, like, you really caused this shit. My point to all this is, Understand when you have a bad day and when the universe around you just went bad. When the universe had a bad day. It had nothing to do with you. I've been caught in traffic so many times. Going to work or just going somewhere. And I turn them off. I just chill. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do about it. Unless I get out of my car and just start jogging or contact Elon Musk and tell him, I need some fucking hydraulics in my car. Start jumping over these cars. You know, create something for me. Something crazy like that. that nah. It's out of my hands. So I throw on my favorite podcast, which is We Alive and Living. I'm not playing. But I throw on my favorite podcast. I throw on my favorite music. You know what I mean? Shit, if we're just stuck in traffic and we're not moving, I'll contact somebody and just chop it up over the phone to, to, to make time pass. My point is, occupy yourself or just chill. Listen to the music because there's nothing you can do. It's out of your hands. And not only that, who gives a flying fuck? That job going to be there. Wherever you was going, going to be there. Now, I understand if it was like an opportunity or something going on that you really wanted to be there for, whatever the case may be. But my point is, don't lose your fucking mind over things you can't control. Your boss is a piece of shit, like nine out of ten times they are. That's on him. Because his wife is cheating on him, and he got a reckless life, and his kids don't respect him, and he an asshole, and nobody give a fuck about this dude. You know, that, that's on him. Don't let him transfer that energy towards you. And that's what the topic of discussion is. When shit happens, S-H-I-T, she hates it today. Mother Earth just hates today. So she raining on motherfuckers. You know what I mean? We as humans, we're destroying the ground, messing up the Earth, whatever the case is. Whatever shifted the universe in that direction that landed upon you with the wrath of everything, it's not your fault. And I got to reiterate that, that it's not your fault. And I got to explain that because I've seen people have straight up and down fucking meltdowns about this shit. Straight up. Like, have a fucking meltdown. And this is why I say you got to understand when something's not your fault and when it's out of your hands and you need to chill. Because you take a day that wasn't your fault, like traffic or your boss or whatever, and you allow it to interfere in your space, in your heart, in your mind, spirit, soul. You allow it to interfere. Now you're in a bad mood, right? And now you're doing to the people around you or the people that care about you or to yourself, you're doing what was, what was given to you. You're giving them bullshit. Like, motherfucker, I got nothing to do with why you was in traffic. I got nothing to do with your badass day. The fuck you spazzing on me for? So you see, you become your day if you allow it to become you. If you allow the day to take over your head. And that goes for everything. It's not just the day. I'm just saying the day because I would say 90% of people can relate to this kind of situation. 
And you need to understand when something is out of your control. It's like the other day, for example, me, I booked a ticket for somebody that was that's supposed to come see me in the summer. And I'm like, all right, cool. I booked the ticket, whatever, whatever. And this person is kind of young, so they can't really travel too much on their own. So I wanted the flight to just take them from where they're at to me. And then, boom, I book everything is cool. Then, like, a week later, I get, a, I get an email saying that my, the flight's been changed. And now this person has to go from where they're at to fucking another, another state. And from that state, wait for, for, like, four fucking hours to get another plane, then come here. And I'm like, yo, no. How are you going to just book that? How are you going to just change all that? I can understand, I can understand if you change the, the date or the time frame or something. Like, change it from nighttime to morning time or the next day or something. But you're going to just put them on another plane going somewhere else and then they got a reason no no and then they got wait like five hours in the airport like come on spirit this is why your stocks is down this is why your shit yellow and you don't got a strong color you got the yellow color like like man you fucking wild but it was initially my initially initially am i saying that right initially ah whatever it was originally <laughs> my fault for booking with the motherfuckers to begin with but my point is the ticket's fucked up, right? And yeah, you could be like, oh, that's your fault. But I didn't know that was going to happen, so come on. I've, I've flown with Spirit before, no issues. But so they change it, and I was like, damn. And I, for a second, I got upset. I was like, fuck, what the fuck? Always something. I just had to chill and be like, I'm going to scream, yell, kick, whatever the fuck the case may be. But all I'm going to do is contact them and cancel the flight and book another one or ask them to reschedule this shit, whatever the case may be. So I chilled. Let it go. Then, right after that, somebody called me and gave me some news about some stupid shit that had nothing to do with me. But they wanted me to react to it. They wanted me to give them an opinion on something that had nothing to do with me. And they were all wilding the fuck out. Like, they wanted me to be mad with them. And this happened right after I, I received the email that this flight was changed, whatever. So, while they were speaking to me on the phone, I'm looking up in the air like, what about this conversation this person think I give a fuck about? You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. It got nothing to do with me. Why are you telling me this? So I was upset because I wanted to get off the phone. Yeah, I could have just hung up until I got to go. But they were really like fucking wilding out venting. So I was letting them vent. But I was getting bothered while they were venting because like they were putting that energy on me. And I had to kind of like really take a step back and be like, yo, chill. You know, like this conversation had nothing to do with me. I'm allowing this conversation and what just happened with the, with the airline ticket kind of shift my mood and get me upset. And I had things to do this, that, that day. So I can't be going into it mad or upset. I need to stay focused. So this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, there are things that directly affect us. Now, that's different. Like, like if you woke up late and now you're stuck in traffic and your day starts going a certain way because you started it wrong or you didn't follow your guidelines and the things you were supposed to do, that's cool to be upset and upset with yourself. And like, damn, man, I need to fucking, it's, it's a lesson learned, pages burned, let's keep it going. But understand and dissect situations when they happen around you. Realize when shit burning around you and you're not on fire. Realize that part. That's a good way to look at it. Realize when shit around you burning and you're not on fire. You're like, all right, so I'm not on fire. I just need to find a way out of this fucking fire because you, you motherfuckers is wilding right now. And what I mean by on fire, I don't mean like shit's literally burning. I mean like people are on fire. They third, they 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 they, 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 they you know they, they five degrees high. How the fuck that thirty they thirty eight hot? You know they they real mad. So much lingo to keep up with nowadays. You know, they they, they real mad. They on fire. They ricocheting on people. This person's mad. This person, that person's mad. That person. People are just mad. People are trying to put that energy on you. And people are just mad at you because you're not mad. You know, you need to know when to chill. You need to look at yourself metaphorically and be like, yo, this shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get to work late. I called. I'm stuck in traffic. I'm still on my way. I'll try to find a shortcut with a GPS, whatever the case may be. But there's nothing you can do in a sense of like the way the day is processing itself, the way the day is going. So just handle it accordingly. And if you can't, there's nothing you can, you can do to handle it to like maneuver the day better. It's one of those situations. You just gotta ride this bitch out. Don't lose your mind about it. Or you can just turn around, and go back home, and not get paid, and then your boss really be upset. But you know, but my point is, shit gonna be there, man. The money gonna come. As long as you're putting in that work and you're trying hard and you're doing what you gotta do, you're gonna run into a few bumps in the road, yes. But the money gonna come. You know how many times I've been in a situation where I panic about going somewhere. Fuck, I'm late to work. Ah, 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 ah. And then I get there. It's like nobody give a fuck. 
Nobody even acknowledges that I was late sometimes. You know, and you're like, oh man, fucking losing my mind over nothing. I'm fucking tripping right now over nothing. You know, so you, you ever you see? I'm sure many of us have been in situations like that where we stress something so fucking much, only to find out that the only person that gave a fuck that much was you. The only person that was stressing it that much was you. The only one looking like a damn dick is you. So you stop and go like, damn, man, I was tripping over nothing. So you had all that anger, all that buildup, getting your blood pressure high, rubbing people the wrong way, driving to work mad speed and probably going to get a damn ticket, whatever, just to get there and nobody give a fuck. Also look at it like this, man. When you late, you late. I've been a manager in many places. And I don't like giving people shit. I like, I understand life happens. But my point is, when somebody was late, whether they were five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, nigga, you late. So I didn't really care how you was late. You late. Let me give this a big pause right here if I can find that line. Yeah, you know, I don't care if you was two minutes late, three minutes, an hour, a day. You late, you late. I'm not going to, like, jump up your ass about it, but you late. So to me, it's like whether you're five minutes, an hour, whatever, you was late. So... I always look at the way when I'm late to something or something's happening. It only got to do with time. I'm just stressing time. But, you know, when something happens around me, something breaks, whatever the case, or I lost something, you know, you're late. Or, or it broke. Or you lost it. Look for it. Try to fix it. Do better waking up next time or, or leaving earlier or whatever the case. Or whatever happened, happened. But it's done with. We need to learn how to let go of the material idea of something. The job, yeah, we need it. We got to be there. But don't let your job enslave you mentally. Don't let it become you. You go there, you do your job, they give you a check. That is the fucking exchange. You don't owe them your, your heart, mind, body, and fucking soul. It don't work like that. The job is the job is the job. They say we want you to do these numbers. You do the numbers, they give you a check. You bounce. You don't owe them a motherfucking thing. Nothing. At all, aside from the labor that they gave you a check for. And they're giving you the check. They said, we're going to give you deuces. I gave you the work you wanted me to do. Now, you can go above and beyond if you want to. You want to get promoted or whatever. But some people have a job just to have a job. Because they're supposed to. And get this bread and buy your sneakers. Or get your food going. You know, the finances going. You know, whatever. But that's not the topic. The topic is, remember this, people. When a problem happens, try to break down. Are you the cause of the problem? Or is the problem just happening around you? And you just happen to be there. It's like a tornado. You didn't cause a tornado. But when it's happening, you gotta, you gotta be smart. Like, oh shit, it's a fucking tornado coming. You know, it's just spinning. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's life. Life is like a big tornado. Different, small tornadoes around you. And you gotta watch out when you see those tornadoes. You gotta move accordingly. And sometimes you can't move out the way. So you gotta just, you gotta shelter yourself. You gotta prepare yourself for each fucking tornado. Every person, every event, every situation, every street is a mini tornado that you gotta prepare yourself for. And, and realize that, are you, do you have an internal tornado? Are you causing a tornado right now? Or are these tornadoes just happening around you? And you gotta act accordingly. If you go into a store and people fighting and, and people wilding the fuck out, that's not your fault. You know, you can help and assist, whatever, but that's a tornado happening and you gotta know how to maneuver yourself around it. Now, if you're gonna get involved in that tornado, you need to know what to have, the preparations to know what you're gonna do to neutralize this situation, whatever the case may be, but you need to realize when something isn't your fault and when something is your fault. When something's taking place around you or when you are that thing taking place around other shit. Make sense? Yeah. That's a topic I just want to touch on. The book, S-H-I-T. She hates it today. They say, life's a bitch, and then you die. You see how that goes? The bitch is still going to be here. She lives forever. <laughs> y'all be safe, man. Love y'all. Ha, 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 ha.